Good evening, Philippines, and welcome to the continuing coverage of opening day of the very first professional volleyball league in the Philippines. This is the premier volleyball league, and after Cherry Tigo crossovers defeating the PLDT Home Fiver Power Hitters in dominating fashion earlier, we get to the second game of our doubleheader, and it is the newcomer Santa Lucia Lady Realtors versus the defending champions and arguably the most popular team in the league, Creamline Cool Smashers. Of course, this is all happening at the PCV Social, Civic, and Cultural Center in Bacara, Ilocos Norte. And you're watching us here on One Sports and One Sports Plus for the PBL Open Conference. My name is Boom Gonzalez alongside my longtime partner, Anne Remulia Kanda. It is not only good to see you, Anne, but actually to be with you in one room. And then we are starting volleyball again after uh, almost two years. And we're going to be in a league of not just superstars, but professional superstars, Anne. I know, Boom, there are a lot of things to be really excited about. And of course, uh, most definitely the highlight is the match at hand. And I'm pretty sure everybody who's watching us right now share that same excitement. Uh, it is much talked about. It is much awaited and much anticipated. This battle between the newcomers in uh, the PVL, Santa Lucia Lady Realtors, and the defending champs, Creamline Cool Smashers. All right. Now, for those who are not in the know, and let us go through our usuals, which is first, our tournament format. And because uh, obviously we are, you know, uh, starting late and catching up, we, we've already heard that we are going to be playing every day. I know, and uh, I'm pretty sure, apart from the players who are thinking, uh, you know, it will be uh, quite tiring. A lot of the fans are so excited because it's going to be six day, uh, games, um, you know, uh, a week for all of these teams, which means they only have one rest day. Uh, but uh, it's, it's going to be a very uh, busy conference for them as they as these 10 teams would play a single round robin, which means, boom, all of the matches that they will play are very crucial. Of course, they, from they, the start. From the very beginning, everything is crucial. N no team to be taken lightly because they will only face each other once in the elimination round. And uh, uh, as, we, as we said, six game days a week. So it's really full for uh, you know these teams. On top of the games, I'm pretty sure most of them will also have training. So you can just imagine how busy their schedules would be. And at the end, the top four teams will move on to the best of three semis. So everything really has much higher stakes for all of these teams. And as much uh, and as uh, obviously, usap usapan yan that these teams are trying to going are trying to ease into this tournament because of the long break. Mm -hmm. You can't afford too much, you know, in terms of taking your time, getting your bearings in this PVL Open Conference. All right, let's talk about the newcomers. They have been absent. They were absent in sports in general for seven years, from 2010 to 2017. They come back, of course, formerly from the PSL. They have now joined as the newcomers here in the Premier Volleyball League. And this is the big three that will banner this uh, uh, jacked up Santa Lucia Lady Realtors, if you may add. Literally big names and very tall players as well. You have here, of course, Mika Reyes, Isa Maiza Pontilias, and MJ Phillips. These are uh, already household names, you know, for, for volleyball fans out there. So, kilalang kilala, inaabangan, and these are the three players who we expect to deliver for a Santa Lucia. Uh, and uh, not only that, you know, these are uh, multi-awarded individually, especially when you talk about Mika Reyes and Isa Maiza Pontilias moving over to Santa Lucia. Well, a lot of people are so happy with the fact that uh, they're saying Santa Lucia won the free agency with Isa Maiza. And then Mika Reyes, they're saying, of course, uh, she is already part of Santa Lucia. But in reality, she's only played a handful of games since she joined in February. I think uh, on, in her own words, she said four or five games pa lang and nilalaro niya. So technically, she is really a newcomer still coming into this year. Yes, you are right. Boom, definitely. And I guess 
for, for many, you know, the biggest question and what uh, people anticipate to see is how well they will play together with the rest of the squad. But, you know, again, like what we said, these are very big names. Mika Reyes, a lot of people, inaabangan din talaga yan. She's been part of the national team several times, right. has played in the Asian Games, the Southeast Asian Games, and, you know, we just hope to her to bring, you know, this experience also um, here on court. And uh, there you can see MJ Phillips. Yes, Marjana also. Phillips, mm -hmm. who has had her encounters with injuries, obviously, in the past, but here's the thing this is going to be the first time that she's going to be with you know a stacked lineup and then there were the four former petrogas uh players also who are joining this team that's one of them jonas sabete you're looking at jovi prado also and we'll talk about them a little later on there's uh akai nepomuseno palualua also in in the end uh dj Cheng also the ball yeah. Tama, galing Petrogas Angels who are joining Santa Lucia. And ironically, and the Petrogas Angels were the last team that the Creamline Cool Smashers met uh, in 2019 in the championship. So definitely very interesting combination right. of players that we will see here. Uh, quite uh, interesting to see also maybe more balance uh, to help also the big, uh, the big guns, as, as we would call them, for the lineup of Santa Lucia. So, yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are interested to see them in action and, and see how they will battle it out with the uh, cream line today. Um, uh, Kai Balwalwa said, sila ang nagsilbing scouting report daw ni Coach Orculio <laughs> dahil sila yung huling nakalaban ng cream line Cool Smashers in the finals of the Open Conference in 2019. Now, speaking of the cream line Cool Smashers who are, again, on opening day, making their debut here, it's been a while for their fans. And they are obviously stacked, and they even got better, if that's even possible. But we begin with the big three names that we have, and Rimulia Kanda. Yep, uh, just, you know, the faces, very familiar faces. Uh, Valdez Morado and Galanza, you know, the big names, the stars of uh, Cream Line, who uh, had... You know, they made waves uh, previously and of course, uh, people looking forward to how they would perform again today. And what's what's uh, very interesting with this team is that it's a multi-awarded team. So it's, it's not just, you know, them having uh, um, uh, the championships previously, but, you know, these uh, three players are also um, title holders. Yeah. A conference MVP in, uh, for Eliza Valdez, three-time uh, PVL Conference MVP. You have Gia Morado, who's also a three-time PVL Finals MVP. And Gemma Galanza, we saw um, and we witnessed this, how she really stepped up, you know, uh, in the absence of uh, Valdez during that year. She was a 2019 Open Conference um, MVP. And, you know, you make a good point about uh, Gemma Galanza because if you're Gemma and you are coming off probably your best season with Greenline Cool Smashers being you know, awarded what she was awarded in that last conference. And then the pandemic happens, obviously, nas nasira yung momentum niya, no? So it will be interesting to see again how she gets back into that form because she was really incredible the last time out against uh, Petra Gas Angels. And of course, we all know the, the duo of uh, Eliza and Gia and how they play b beautiful music together. But they also got better. And they had a couple of uh, recruits here that, uh, you know, just like Santa Lucia who had four, we have a couple here who uh, are big names too in their own right. Fresh, uh, fresh, as, as we would say, really fresh. Uh, Carlos joining, uh, you know, in, in the, the team. Uh, more uh, youth, <laughs> if, if we may say, more youth uh, to add here. That's Carlos, yung uh, sinasabi natin. Ano? Of course, we have the regulars there, Risa Sato, will be there. Rose Vargas is going to be there. Sherwin Meneses, by the way, will be serving as a coach for them as Ella, the elevator. Eliza Valdez told me a couple of days ago they have to watch out for this girl this season. And she didn't ah. tell me why. She just said, just watch out for her this season. Isn't that intriguing, Andrew? It is intriguing, but we've also seen how she has it Panaga on our screens right now. But it's also in, uh, interesting because we've seen how she played uh, you know, during her collegiate days and, and how uh, that's why she was uh, called Ele Elevator. Right, right. So that's, and uh, we haven't even touched on, you know, guys like Pao Soriano, uh, Mitch Gumabao, and everybody else. Well, they are the defending champions, and uh, Coach Tai Bundit has been training them via Zoom, but with incredible intensity. You know what else has incredible intensity, and The rivalry back in the day between Eliza Valdez and Mika Reyes. 
It's been talked about for many years. It took a backseat for a while, and it's back with a vengeance. Uh, what what better way to uh, trigger that conversation but, you know, today's match? But what can you say about the, the whole thing? I mean, they haven't faced each other in a long time, right? It's so been a while. Be interesting. This should be interesting, right? Well, it, it's been a while, so, uh, you know, the, these players have uh, faced each other back in their collegiate days. But now this is a different scene, it's a different court, it's a different arena, different uh, dynamics altogether. And now let's meet the starters And it's time to get this game going, so let's go down to our Coliseum partner, Noel Zarate, to get us started. Outside Spiker from the Ateneo de Manila University, team captain number two, Eliza Valdez. Middle blocker from the National University, number five, Risa Sato. Middle blocker from the College of St. Benilde, number six, Jeanette Panaga. Opposite hitter from De La Salle University, number seven, Michelle Gumabo. Center from the Ateneo de Manila University, number 12, Gia Morado. Outside Spiker from Adamson University, number 15, Gemma Galanza. Starting Libero from the Far Eastern University, number 11, Tyla Tienza. And the interim head coach for Creamline is Sherman Menezes. And now the starters for the Santa Lucia Lady Realtors. Middle blocker from De La Salle University, number five, Mika Reyes. Opposite hitter from the University of Santo Tomas, number eight, Isa Maiso Pontillas. Center also from UST, team captain number 12, Rupi De Leon. Outside Spartan from Juniata College, number 13, MJ Phillips. Middle blocker from the University of St. LaSalle, number 15, Del Panomata. Outside Spiker from the Bulacan State University, number 20, Jonah Sabete. Starting Libero for Santa Lucia out of Anderson University, number one, Ben Pineta. Head coach for the Lady Realtors is Erickson of Julio. And this game is held under the supervision and regulation of the Games and Amusements Board. This is match number two between Creamline and Santa Lucia. This is the Premier Volleyball League. The starters for the defending champions, Creamline Cool Smashers, including the new addition, Jeanette Panaga. La Tienza will be the libero, while Bank Pineda will serve her duties on the other side. We haven't even talked about Del Palomata, one of them uh, late additions also. For Santa Lucia to add on to the height uh, that uh, numero ocho, as they call her, Isa Maizo, Pontilla, Sandrita Reyes will provide. What are you looking for at the start of this match, other than and them trying to get into the flow of things? Because when you talk to the players, they're saying they haven't scouted any of uh, a lot of the other opponents because yeah, nobody's been playing. So the strategy is to concentrate on themselves first. So with that in mind, what are you looking for in this matchup, in the opening set at least? Yeah, well, I think first and foremost, it's, it's to see how organized the teams are because it, it all starts from there. If you're very organized as a team, it's, it's very easy for you to adjust to your opponent, especially in this case where they will be meeting each other for the first time. Nice corner find there by MJ Marjana Phillips to tie the match and one all cool smashers lady realtors playing at the pcv social civic and cultural center in Takara, ilocos norte it's been a fine first day for the first professional volleyball league in the philippines nice pick up there sato keeping it alive pineda and that's out it's a little wide for Isa Maizo Pontillas. You know, she is making her comeback in a way to the V League because she was part of the V League after she came out of college from UST after her championship, seven, season 73, if I'm not mistaken, then going to season 74. And then the next year, she was part of the V League, and we'll talk more about that later. But first, it is 2 1. 
courtesy of Greenline. Ball still alive. Cross court. Pineda was there. Isa pushes it to the other side. That's a double touch on Risa Sato. So we're tied early here in the first set. And uh, a little bit of force there at the net. Maizo obviously using her experience. Mika Reyes, lady realtor. So technically, this is only her sixth game as a lady realtor. That's a nice attack there from Gemma Galanza. And if we're going to judge and from that form, from that flight, it seems like it's the Gemma Galanza that we saw from the finals of the 2019 Open Conference. I know that might be overstating it with one flight, but hey, she's looking good. A good play. Phillips in the middle. Oh, she must be happy to have, you know, a Maizo and a Mika Reyes uh, right now helping her here with the Lady Realtors. Uh, who's their, their highest finish in the PSL was uh, a fifth place in 2018, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, this is just the right balance that they would need in the team so that they are able to distribute more to other players. I don't know what the call there is, but a point will be awarded to the Lady Realtors. Uh, we have, by the way, referees Bobby Celso and Rene Gaspilio here. 4-3, four, 4 serving 3. This receive, which keeps it alive. Atienza sends it over. Phillips setting up De Leon. And a nice strike there from Jonah Sabete, one of those transferees from the Petrodas Angels. Okay, here, I think what would be interesting is to see how Ruby De Leon will really distribute the plays. So we've seen how she has played, and she is the type of setter that will really utilize all of her attackers in front. Reverse. Mitch Gumabao. Four will be serving five. By the way, for the, for the benefit of the viewers and most of you might know this, but we will reiterate the fact that me and Matt are not there at the venue. The only people allowed in the venue, obviously, are the tournament uh, and league officials, the players, obviously, the coaches, the teams, the technical crew, and uh, a few me media members. I think there are four or five select media. And, of course, one representative from us here, from our group of One Sports, Ai Tinsai, will uh, join us in a bit. In the meantime, it's six serving four. Guys deny. Chance here for the realtors to go for a three-point lead. Sabeta changes her mind. They open up. Galanza. Phillips was there. He ni de Leon, but not uh, because Del Palomata was also there, unfortunately. But she didn't make it. Well, she looks good. Jeva looks like she's in shape. You know, um, I was asking them in terms of their physical conditioning, and they said they are at around eight. From a scale of one to ten. Eight out of as ten. As a team, yeah. They feel like they are at eight, and we're, they're hoping to peak as the tournament obviously goes through. As Panaga finds an opening there to tie this match at six off, just as we expected at. Well, many of us have uh, probably witnessed how these teams have trained, you know, at the start of the pandemic on their own through online trainings until they eventually trained together. So it's that 8 out of 10 is good to hear. Right. And and it's all of them will tell you, Anne, as we see this rally here at 6 all, that iba yung Zoom training, and it's been very intense individually. And you know this, Anne, as a champion yourself, iba yung may bola, iba yung may court. Iba yung may kalaban. If iba you have scrimmages, kalaban, yeah. Correct which most of them have, have not had. No tune-up matches, but they're looking good so far as Panaga puts it away, and they take over the lead. Down 6-4 or down 4-6, they're now 7-6 ahead. So far, we've seen good variety of plays coming from Cream Line. And Galanza continues to serve. De Leon. Gumaba was oh. smart to it, but I think it was Morado who will be called for the, the lift here. Oh, what, a, 
What a nifty move by Ruby de Leon. Oh, she's known for that. She's done that a lot. What does Del Palomata bring here as an addition to Santa Lucia? And I think number one is obviously the height, height right. at the net, right. uh, a different kind of energy. That's why when she was starting, no, people really liked watching her. She, you saw her grow into the game. First technical timeout. We'll be back. We're back with you here on One Sports and One Sports Plus for the continuing coverage of opening day for your Premier Volleyball League, the first professional league in the Philippines. That would have been a legal, well, actually it was a legal hit by Isa Miser, if I'm not mistaken, and Kailang Palabas. So now this is, if I'm not mistaken, a 5-1 run mm -hmm. by the Cool Smashers. You see that they are comfortable, you know, moving together as a team. He got able to put it away. Send it over. Pinada, open. It's Sabete who adjusts, open. Valdez trying to go for the corner that is out. They're looking for a check. There's no check. Nine, eight will be the score. This is a great match so far. You're looking at the other players waiting in the wings. Pam Lastimosa, former finals MVP, Amy Ahumiro. They're all in there for the Santa Lucia Lady Realtors. Combination play and a keeping hole at the back. And how many times have we seen that from Gia Morado to Eliza Valdez? Very good connection between these two. I think on, on that note, on the side of uh, Santa Lucia, the Lady Realtors need to adjust uh, their defense a bit. Three-time BVL Finals MVP. De Leon, Phillips. Valdez still finds a way, but Pineda was there to cover. Easy ball for Cream Line. They dig it up. That is going to the corner. Mitch was hoping that she put a little bit of a top spin so the ball will go in, but nope, it is long. Mitch Kumaba, the rest of the Cream Line, cream line cool smashers ahead only by one. The accolades for Ruby De Leon. Actually, but he could put the player na do. And and this is what's so great about this year. Every time you're going to see two teams play, you can pick five players from both teams who have a lot of personal achievements, accolades already, you know, tucked under their belt. And that's what makes, you know, watching this professional volleyball league great. Because you have all the best talents here. That's one of them. Isa Maizo. I have run out of, uh, you know, paper space listing the achievements of Isa Maizo from college to V-League to the PSL. And now I'm sure she's aching to get more here in the Premier Volleyball League. 11-10 is the score. Reverse set to Mitch. Great 
anticipation there at the down. Oh! Alfaizo continues misjudging that ball. It was a good try just to get that ball over. And usually lefties would have that advantage, you know, if, you, if you're trying to hit the ball at that angle. Sato with another great serve. She's so good in those serves, but Del Palamata was so good in terms of closing the door there on Gemma Galanza. So they're sticking close here, 11 to 10. Nip and tuck up there, as they say, as Marjana Phillips backs up for the serve. Good serve. The push doesn't work, but it's still with them. They reverse it to Mitch. Mitch gets it through the block. Now, attack coverage is something that uh, is missing right now for the Lady Realtors. Stuck in the mud, yung paa. The uh, bang Pineda couldn't move. Pineda with the receive. Phillips from behind, and an easy block by Janet Banaga. Red well right in the middle. Access denied. And when things get predictable, look at that single block. 14-11. Which is back serving. Pineda. Under hands it. Sabete. We also have some high flyers here in Gemma Galanza, Lisa Valdez, Jonah Sabete. And back in the day when she was a striker, we're talking about Bang Pineda. That's another one, but of course she is playing libero for the Lady Realtors. But it's also the beauty of, of playing volleyball. It, it's how you get exposed to the different positions in the case of Bang. Uh, she has really proven her, herself, you know, playing different positions. Her latest now as a libero, which is not easy, mind you. <laughs> De Leon, short stab by Palomata. Eliza, Mataasambola. Bang will serve it up. And Sabete will check it out. As Sherwin Meneses will have, I think, around four games until uh, Coach Tai Bundit, if I'm not mistaken, uh, comes out of quarantine and coaches in person. The 3 9 cool smashers. A chance here for the Lady Realtors. Umabo sends it over. Pineda. Maizo lost her footing. She was, uh, I think, conscious about the attack line. Yeah. Now Gemma Galanza back serving. They had a nice little run when Gemma Galanza was serving a little earlier. They were down by two and they all of a sudden led by two. So let's see if they can duplicate that. As Phillips from behind that gets the net. Does it roll out? Yes, it does. So that means the Cool Smashers will lead 16-13. League of Professional Superstars. That's what you're watching. The Premier Volleyball League, Volleyball League Open Conference is Gemma Galanza iced 
by that second technical timeout pushes that ball out to cut the lead down to two for the Lady Realtors who have Del Palomata serving, 14-16. Then, counter. Just a few exchanges. You know, we haven't seen a big lead so far, so it's been quite close. 17-14 is our score. Ricky Palu. Sports Vision. It's good receive. Ah, great anticipation at the net. They go back to Jonah. Jonah had nobody in front of her. But she could not convert. But on the second jump, yeah, Jonah Sabete. Definitely a high leaper. Just that... Uh, that last attempt didn't make it. 18-14 is our score then. That's out. This received by Isa Maizo Pontilla. So that will cue a first time out here by Coach Orculio. So 14-19. Uh, am I correct, Dan? That was the first like non-technical timeout, yes, right? So that's kasi right. Medyo ka na. this is the biggest lead. What are you seeing, Anne? Well, I think in, in this case there have been quite a number of errors. So a lot quite some free points that uh, you know the cool smashers have been getting from uh, the lady realtors. That's where the uh, that's where the of course the bubble is. Lawag City to be specific it is PCV Social Civic and Cultural Center in Bacara in Locos Norte. These are just some of the scenes, some of the sites. Have you been to Locos Norte, Anne? No, but that will be on top of my list once, you know, it things are be much better. To see all of these, you know, sites. Back to the game, 19-14. Banaga continues to serve. Sabete receives. Phillips in the middle. Easy pickings for Green Line. Nice block there by Reyes. Valdez tries to go for a faster Attack, this one opens up. Phillips unable to keep it in play. That is the first bomb, I think, for the game for many time MVP Eliza Valdez. Six point lead, which forces Coach Orgullo to bring in Kai Palualua, who's uh, telling her teammates to relax and smile and not be too pressured. It, it's something that uh, they would need at this point. You see the persistence on the side of uh, the cool smashers. What has been working for the lady realtors really is the height at the net. But they just need to be a little bit more consistent on that one. Cheng is also in the ball game for the first time. Free ball. Cheng sets up Sapete who puts it away. Nice explosive attack from Sabete. Great angle as Diana, well. You, you said it perfectly. Explosive. Jonas Sabete, who is extremely thankful to the Santa Lucia company, corporation, for not only taking her in, but providing her and Jovi Panaga a place near their training center so that she, they don't have to go far to go back and forth for their, uh, their uh, training bubble. Which is very critical at, at this point. 2015 is our score. Probably the biggest lead that we've seen. 21-15. Lisa Sato. Gia Morado. Sabete receiving. What was wrong there? Was that the set? Was it the reception to begin with? Starting with uh, the pass, but also the timing of uh, Kai. It's a little bit off here. All right. So we have another timeout here by Coach Orculio. Coach Urculli, of course, who basically came in at the same time that Mika Reyes came, came in for the Santa Lucia Realtors. A lot of changes to be embraced. This is the biggest lead, 22-17. Quite a number of substitutions also for the Lady Realtors. As 
Isa Maiso Potillas will sit down for a while and watch from the sidelines as Gia Morado. Napitin. Yung set. Kumabaw. That is a tough set. And a tough set to receive from her side, Anne, wasn't it? Look at this. Look at the... It was in between the two blockers. 23-15. We're having some uh, technical issues, uh, just in case you guys are wondering. We're trying to fix right now. Now it is 24-15. Wow, this this just all of a sudden. Kanina, tikita tayo, palita now. Dreamline just pulling away. It was a good start for the Lady Realtors but has slowed down a bit tail end of this first set. And it's these errors that we've mentioned earlier. So that we've been uh, seeing quite a few errors. A bit of a struggle with uh, the passes as well. Yeah, you're also seeing uh, and the fact that uh, maybe at least from the very first set, we see that Greenline is really just more familiar with each other as a team. And, and it, it's manifesting the uh, so first set. And we expected that. They're the defending champions. They have a solid core. They've been training for almost two months in Clark. As a touch error, I believe. Oh, is it an overreach? For Gia Morado? Yeah, so Santa Lucia gets a point there. So delaying the Greenline cool smashers from taking this first set. Morado chooses Gumaba on the open. De Leon. Eliza. That's out. So Santa Lucia Lady Realtors hanging on in this set. Gonna make a go of it. And if usually coaches will tell you that, even if parang lamang na at mananalo na yung kabila, you don't want to let go and just give them the set. And, you know, it's not over until they hit 25. And it's still not over. 24 18 is our score. And Sherwin Vanessa's will call his very first time out. So it is in situations like this when, when Ty is coaching and it seems like he cannot finish a set. He just calls this time out and does nothing. It's it's just to slow s slow them down, you know, make them think. Right. Uh, they just need to uh, cut the momentum and uh, turn it over on, on their side. In this case, you know, it's just slowing them down. Probably just uh, yeah. What do you need to do? It's just one point. And also to kind of halt the momentum. Can you still hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, but
Check, 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 on the bar. Check, check, check. Check, check. Check, check. Check, check, check. Check, check. Check, check. Check, check. Check, check. Check, check, check. Check, 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 check. We are back here after our uh, technical issue. Hello, my name is Boom Gonzalez. I'm with Andrew Uyakana. And uh, you're watching the continuing coverage of opening day of the first, very first professional volleyball league in the Philippines. It is the premier volleyball league open conference and the Creamline Cool Smashers take set number one and are ahead 4-1 here in set number two. Am I right to say, Anne, that that first set, it looked like Santa Lucia Lady Realtors were trying to look for a little bit of chemistry on their side? I think that you're on point. Uh, it's all about chemistry. There is no question about the skills of all of the players, but what we saw is that uh, eh, no? they trying to figure out what to do um, next. Groping for form as Bobby Celso, our Referee uh, clarifying something with uh, Eliza Valdez, so we play on. And it will be a point. Four touches will be called on Santa Lucia Lady Realtors. Nita Reyes. Realtors two. And Bull Smashers, Eliza Valdez five with a one set lead here. And. Uh, Ilocos Norte, to be exact, the PCV Social, Civic, and Cultural Center in Baca. Phillips, anticipated well by the Cool Smashers. Pineda. Maizo Pontillas. The push to the other side. 
We got a rally here. Beisel smartly gets it off the block. Let me try to go through some of her achievements in the DB talking about Isa Meisel. <clears throat> Season five, she was best server, best blocker. Season six, she was final M finals MVP and season MVP. Season seven, finals MVP, best attacker. And season 11, conference MVP and conference best scorer. That's in the V League only for Isa Maiza Pontillas. Now she comes back here in the PVM, in this iteration of the V League. I'm not surprised hearing that long list because indeed, especially during her time, she was really one of the best um, opposite attackers that we have. And on cue, puts it away. The 2016 best opposite spiker also of the PCL and she holds the record as the only player to win the finals MVP twice consecutively and the first player winning both conference and finals MVP in the same conference. And of course, she won a championship. And just as we're saying that, one time best server, there you go. So she is an all around player. Yes, she is. is she it? is an all around player. My, the lasting memory that I have of Isa Maizo is the face painted one. Oh. When they won a championship. I yeah. think it was season 72. Was it season 72? I thought it was the season, but yes, that so. image is something that uh, is familiar. Right, right. Six all, and the Lady Realtors have come to life here in set number two. And it is numero ocho who is doing the damage, the USD legend. And imagine that girl started off as a setter in USD when she was a, a rookie, if I'm not mistaken. Spanaga finally kills the vibe for the Santa Lucia Lady Realtors. She was a backup setter in 2005, talking about Isa Maizo Pontinas. Another champion on your screen, Smitch Kumabao. 7-6, Sabete. Ball comes back. Maizo, Phillips in the middle. Kaila Tienza was there. Galanza flies, but Phillips is steady. They dig it to the other side, and Sabete goes cross court. Galanza will try again, flips it over, no. De Leon tries to trick the cool smashers, and they do. And they tie the match at seven all, and this is basically, and how the first set started. It was a good start, it was how they sustained, you know, the same momentum up to the end, which hopefully something that, uh, you know, they have already addressed here in the second set. Galanza, well, that uh, hits a lady realtor anyway, even if it bounces out. So that means the Cool Smashers again goes to the technical timeout with the lead. Eight seven is our score. As Galanza serves us up, and Del Palomata, who we haven't heard of much from the first set, ties the match at eight all. It's either boom. We haven't seen much, you know, action from some of the players because of uh, the way that they've been passing at this moment. So we haven't seen much from, you know, the middle attackers. 
Phillips in the open. And return to sender for Janet Panaga. You know, Eliza Valdez, I was talking to her a couple of days ago, and she was saying she is, she is so happy with, specifically with Tots Carlos, the energy of Tots Carlos and Banks. She says she, they are overflowing with energy, and she's, uh, she is overjoyed to be her teammate. That's what Eliza Valdez said. I, I love that point on energy. energy. I, I think that's something that you know every team needs. Eh? You need energy that's infectious. You know, hakahawang energy that uh, you know makes everyone feel alive. Right. The way she said it, as MJ Phillips here finds a hole in the defense of the Green Line Cool Smashers. The way Eliza said said it was high naku boom. Tung tuwa ako jan kay Tot sa tsaka kay Pangs. I can imagine her saying. Exactly. Dano ng pagkasabi niya. Sato gets the score. Ten to nine. I'm not making that up. You can ask her. That's what she said. I don't know why. It's like I'm hearing her voice <laughs> while you were saying it. Alam mo yung hinawakan pa yung forehead na. Gio Morado back at the service deck. Nine serving ten. Check that. Ten serving nine, rather. Phillips. Oh, nobody behind. Nobody recovering. Sato saying it's her fault. She wasn't able to react also. And Phillips uh, thinking that there was somebody mm -hmm. there. Just aiming the hand. And it's been the, the game, you know, for, for the attackers who targeting the uh, hands of the blockers. Sato, Phillips waiting. Miscommunication between Reyes and De Leon. And this is where, you know, those practices and, uh, you know, uh, lack of chemistry. Yung ambu yan niya. Yan, napag-usapan namin nila Jonah tsaka nila Kai. Yan, yung wala pa daw sila sa point na kindatan at amu yan. Alam na nila yung ginagawa ng mga teammates nila. They're not at that point yet. That's what they feel. But, you know, that's very good awareness on their part. Because it means that, you know, just, just knowing that, even if wala pa kayo dun sa stage na yun, you right. know what to work on. Right. And it takes some time. Right. But again, as Ant pointed out at the start of the conference, this is a single round tournament, so you want to try to get some chemistry fast in this kind of a tournament. There's a service error by Bucareas there. Gives Cool Smashers a free point. And Risa Sato, who is a great server, let's hope I don't jinx it, is a great <laughs> server, is on deck. De Leon. Sapete, check by Panaga. How about Panaga today? And has been solid on offense and defense for Coach Sherwin Meneses. She's been uh, doing very well at the net, and we've seen that, that the challenge that she's bringing to the attackers of the Lady Realtors. And I guess ito yung kailangan isipin ng uh, Lady Realtors at this point. Eh? Things are becoming predictable, and Panaga is just there everywhere, wherever they set the ball. They have to make it, you know, they have to make their opponent guess. Isa has been so good in this set number two. You know, naupo siya ng set number one sa dulo, and might have been, might have been crucial for Isa. She saw what was happening. And for, took a breath. Yeah, and for veterans, that's important. For right. you to see it from a different perspective, a, a different viewpoint, what needs to be done. And yeah, there she is, stepping up her game. Nice save there by Pineda. Oh, overshot. She was trying to go. For a placement. This is what I said. No court time for a long time. So yes. There are, the dimensions really don't change, but your feel for the game sometimes, hindi naman nawawala. As they say, muscle memory din yan. As Palomata puts it away, but, but it takes... But there's so many factors. Right. May movement in the court. Yeah, you're right, it doesn't change. But then, you, you're now playing, you're moving in the court. And then you cannot manufacture intensity also from an opponent, even if there's no crowd in the case of right now the Premier Volleyball League Open Conference as we are now 13 serving 14. Galanza. Pineda dives. Phillips adjusts. Easy take for Gumabao. Back to Galanza. Morado. Run and gun for Panaga. But the point goes to the Lady Realtors. 14 all. Now the question is, this is where we were earlier at around midway of the first set. And then the Creamline Cool Smashers 
you know, went into another gear and had separation. Let's see what's going to happen here. Second set action between Creamline and the Lady Realtors of Santa Lucia. Pineda, Ed Orcullo loves the defensive effort. Phillips. Galanza cross court. The former Adamson standouts as Phillips goes down the line and they take the lead. And you see if Phillips gets the right height of the set, right, right. perfect timing. Right. Look at how she can really direct the ball. Look at that angle. Credit also Pineda for that dig that led to that play. From the back, Sapete could not keep it in play. So Valdez, who's been doing that many, many years, ties this match at 15 all. Look at the flight, the set, the finish. Exquisite. Fifteen all. Somebody's calling out something. We heard that. And I think it was the side of Santa Lucia. I don't know what it was. Probably positioning. Ah, Bobby Celso, yes. Position, yeah, it's there position. There we go. Our lead referee, 16-15. Santa Lucia in the lead. Again, bumabati kami na maganda gabi. Uh, everybody in the Philippines watching us in the first game. The Cherry Tigo crossovers looked really good as they defeated the PLDT Home Fiber Power Hitters, coached by Roger Korayeb, of course. Lea Dimakulangan, who is serving as the ate to the very young power hitters. Uh, going down in defeat in three sets against uh, a tall and uh, an in-shape Cherry Tigo crossovers, of course, led by Jaja Santiago. And uh, Dindin Manapat was also there, of course. Mylene Paat. They were the ones who opened up our first professional volleyball league. You want you want a little trivia, Ed? Yes, please. I'll give you a quick <laughs> trivia. We'll go in history. Let's go back history. Survey Jasmine the Bulls was the first player to get us going for the first ever <laughs> professional <laughs> volleyball league. <laughs> Kala mo kung ano eh, no? I was like, my eyes are, what is Kala it? Mo, I was gonna go back to the 1950s or something like that. No. Jasmine was our well, first server. It will be, it right? It will be history. She was our first server. She was the one that got the league going back after, what, the last time anybody played Competitive indoor volleyball was, I think, March 7 or March 8. When was the last time you did a coverage? Do you oh, remember you know, the it date? It was March. Uh, I forgot the date. It's March last year. March 4 ako eh. March 4. No. I think, I'm not sure what date exactly it was March. 16 all is our score. Phillips wide on that one. These errors that... Uh, Aren't helping. You know that Good she's idea, targeting that down the line. Yeah, yeah. She, she, she got a point earlier with that, but the execution there is quite tricky. I mean, let's. I, I only say this as we are right now in the middle of this rally, and Sato giving them a two-point lead, so that people do not take for granted the fact that we are actually playing volleyball. Well, they are. You and I are, you know, team cozy here watching on, in front of a big screen but we're not taking this for granted because this is a moment that you know volleyball has come back and professional sports is back the pba is back and now the pvl is back you know so and everything is here on one sports and one sports plus boom gonzalez and Ermulia kanda as jonas sabete slides it wide and now cool smashers again looking to separate 19 16 here in this second set. And it's this point that, uh, you know, the lady realtors really need to focus on because remember, going back to set number one, there was that turning point where the cool smashers just never looked back until they hit that 24 point, uh, and they, they couldn't close out that set. But of course, for lady realtors, you don't want to go back to that situation again. And this is what great teams do. This is what champion teams do. They, they have gears. 
and the Cool Smashers in set number one at the very least went into a different gear towards the end and they're trying to do it again. Sherwin Meneses, who is the interim head coach, sitting in for Tai Bundit. Teresa Sato there getting ready to block on this offensive of the Lady Realtors. Miss set, miss receive. A chance here for the Cool Smashers. Pineda gets a hand on it. Easy over. Morado. And it might have not been. Yes, it's not, it's not ball over. Importante dito yung kapit ng Santa Lucia and Mika Reyes. Even if she will not be credited with the block, the distraction at the very least for Risa Sato. Valdez checked. Valdez again. But this one will roll out. 2017. It's the persistence that you need. Minakuha first try. Let's try again. Look at that rollout. We haven't even seen, you know, Tots Carlos yet here for the Cool Smashers. So much more right. uh, to see, actually. 20 serving 17. Sapete receives. Phillips. Basang basa. No? Basang basa because you see that the you know first first um, problem that they have really is the pass and uh, Cheng would have to find a way you know just to set it up. Pero kitang kita na yung nakapuesto na yung uh, blockers on the side of Cream Nine. And you know where that started? That started with that great serve by Gia Morado. She's always been known to be a great server. It's hard to read, and she keeps going to Jonah Sabete. If you notice, they're challenging her, her receiving skills. That one is sailing out though, so the Lady Realtors still in it. 18 will be serving 21. They look like they're in shape though. I mean, the players in general, right? And which it, is very good. It's, it, I mean, just from a individual standpoint they look like they're in good condition playing condition is a different thing but at least the optics yes they, they, they've done um their homework throughout all throughout this pandemic. Yeah. yeah like my partner andrew <laughs> mulya kanda has done also let yes, me just mention that <laughs> showing the guns here in the studio in one sports as uh mitch kumabao flexing there for the four point lead 20 to 18 the first time Jovi Prado, who has joined the Santa Lucia Lady Realtors. Again, it's the first pass that's missing here for the Lady Realtors. Is there any other, that mainly a lefty hitter, that is better than Isa in, in recent memory? Sabi na natin, in the last, what, decade or more, 15 years. You know, I don't Can mean you? any disrespect no, 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 because no, yeah. there is, but. Contilias has always been a household name when you talk about lefty, lefty. hitters. Yeah. No? So again, no disrespect to the players, but no, no, no. for for the longest time, and you know how she has um, also embraced her age. She's been playing for a long time, and oh, yet yes. you see that you know the condition. That's another point. Uh, it, it's still there. Kaya pang sumabay. That's an ace. Yeah, it is. And it's a good one from Glow Troncoso. Ganda ng hugot ni Coach or Kuyutuna. It's no disrespect, we're just saying because she is so bemedaled and achieved so much individually and... And you know, Boom, if you look at her, nothing fancy, no superstar never, moves, but never. she is very efficient. Never, and that's what I yeah. love about her. Never. She has, I remember in college, I used to call her like, you know, a silent killer. Because she is. Right? Every time you give her, uh, if, if you need a point, she'll always be there right. to deliver it for USC. Well, they, they need it right now because they're behind by 2-22-20. It's been a team effort in the meantime for the Green Line Cool Smashers. We have Janet Panagas doing well, Gemma Galanza is doing well, Gia Morado has been serving well, and Eliza Valdez is just providing and picking her spots. That is, by the way, her phrase. She says she's at the point of her career that she's very happy she's surrounded by so many players now that she can pick her spots now on offense. That's what she said. Talking about uh, Baldo, Eliza Valdez. Troncoso continues to serve now. 20, serving 22. Kumabao. It's so a good much, timeout. Yeah, and it's so much power on, on that attack. And sometimes that's all you need. You need the, that timeout to get everybody 
um, uh, composed. Sato will serve. They are two points away from pocketing the second set. Cheng opens up. Set point for the Green Line Cool Smashers. Coach Orculio will call a timeout to try to kill the momentum of the defending champions. And remember, they won the first set, so Coach Orculio nagahanap not only for momentum, but like a combination that will work. You know, mo, no? Kanina, first set, Dulo, pinasok niya si Balualua sa Dulo to try to change it up. Ito, pinasok niya si Jovi Prado sa Dulo. But they're still not getting that that end game or set end set push and you know at the start of the game that was one thing that we mentioned no? it's, it's about chemistry and I, I guess here in in uh, the second set it, it's trying who could make that difference you know from the roster five points five attacks it's Kumaba, who said she cannot believe she's doing twice a day workouts again <laughs> like she is back in college <laughs> <laughs> But look at where it's, you know, it's leading them at. Conditioning is very important. <laughs> uh, and I, you know, if you follow their social media, yeah. you'll see that um, all they do is train. Right. Somebody touched the net, so that's a point. Good timeout, good rally. Coach Orgulio gets this one. Panaga will be called. We're, we haven't gotten a lot of net calls today, right? Which yes. is great. Which is good. So other errors is what we've seen at least so far in this match. But I, you're right. back in the same situation. 24-21. Right, right. Team Lang trying to close out the set. And they do. It is Gemma Galanza who puts it away for the Green Line Gold Smashers. The 2019 Open Conference MVP gives them a two sets to love lead.
third set action here. Uh, the Premier Volleyball League Open Conference right straight from uh, the PCV Social Civic and Cultural Center in Bacara, Ilocos Norte. Magandang gabi, Pilipinas, Boom Gonzalez and Ramulia Kanda. Ayitin Sai, by the way, who is the only uh, on-cam talent there uh, in the venue witnessing this live. But we want to say hi to everybody watching whatever platform you're watching through as the cream line cool smashers the defending champions looking good and looking good at the right time and uh, uh and in the first two sets uh, you see the chemistry is there you know we were tied at 14 all there was like a Around the 17 point mark and then the 19 point mark and then ito na humiwalay na naman ang cream line. They did it a little later than in the first set. Medyo mas kumapit on Santa Lucia which is also a better, a good sign for them I guess for a team that is looking for chemistry that you're getting better by the set. Now let's see if here in the third set they can recover from uh, the late set collapses. So and it to has to be sooner. Yeah. Yeah. Much, much sooner, and if, if they can, it's it's uh, managing to get a lead over Creamline, at least here in the third set, just to shake things up a bit, hopefully. Let's see if they can. Yeah, right now, it's 3-0, though. Phillips. Go to the other side, Valdez. Phillips will keep it in play, so that's an easy over. 3-0 for Creamline. They go to Eliza in the middle and she puts it away. You see pure joy in their faces. That's a play. That's the play right there. He natak ni Risa Sato. At tinapos Eliza Valdez for a 4-0 lead here. The Premier Volleyball League. Second game earlier today. Again, Cherry Tigo crossovers beating the PLDT home fiber power hitters. Cheng. Chance ball. A chance to score a point. They go to Phillips in the middle and it's checked, but it goes out. So the first point in set number three for the Santa Lucia Lady Real Force. Okay, what's interesting in the previous set is that uh, you know the, the stats in terms of attacks, not so far for the Lady Realtors. 11 attack points, 13 for the Cool Smashers. But where the Cool Smashers really had an advantage was their blocking. And you mentioned this. They had four block points. And Talusia, despite the height, only got one block point. So I think uh, in, in that sense, uh, the approach to how they will make sure mahihirapan ng konti yung blockers ng team you know, it's important now for the Lady Realtors. And quietly, Eliza has built 12 points and 9 attacks and 3 blocks. I mean, if you, right? Yes. Uh, quietly, normally, you know? we will mention her name a lot. But oh, yes, yeah, that's so, right. Yeah. But in, in this case, yeah, you're right. Mm. Very quiet. Yeah. Because we were paying attention to Mitch Gumabao and Janet Panaga. Yeah, and veterano talaga. Yung, you know, just, again, in her own words, just picking her spots. And just all of a sudden, she already has 12 points. But, you know, and, also yeah, speaks ahead, a lot about uh, how Gia is, is managing the place, right? Now, Jonas Abete will move out for her old teammate and now still teammate, Jovi Prado, way earlier here. Coach Orculio is making a change earlier in the set now because they are down five. Phillips. Kumabao. Look at the power behind that. I think that's what is missing at this point. You, know? it, it's, you see that the returns or yung balik ng bola from the side of the streamline. There's so much power, there's so much force. And, and probably something that we are looking for also. Those uh, twice a day workouts that she's complaining about <laughs> is that's really the, serving her well. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the same thing. She and Eliza said they, they did not believe. Because they were trying to play catch up, right? Everybody's trying to play catch up. As you look at the numbers for Mitch, and they're leading 72. All these teams are trying to play catch up in the last two months. So some of the teams, if not all of them, went to twice a day, which they haven't felt in two days, or in, uh, since their college days. As we go into the first technical timeout here, Mitch Gumabo again scoring, but the difference that she, she makes fun of it because 
it brings her back to college, sabi niya, pero hindi na pang college yung edad daw nila. I, I, I kind of feel what she's saying that those, Please explain. Uh, twice uh, a day training namin dati, yeah. That was hard because right. of course your body wants to recover, but even before it gets to recover, you have another training to go. But right. she's right, no? As you, I mean, it's it's a fact of life. As you age, syempre, um the way you cope is different. But right. I mean, I salute these girls because right. as we can see, bukang kaya ang kaya and, right. and, and the the results of you know the sacrifice of training right. twice a day to catch up. Right. Showing. You know, speaking of age, and I had uh, Mosi Ravenna guesting on uh, our show this morning, uh, the game weekend, and she made an excellent point about again, we're talking about this new professional premier volleyball league, right? It's a professional league, and it's also a league of full of superstars. But the point here is it's a different generation and batches of superstars. You're talking about the Isa Maisos, and then the generation of Eliza Valdez, and then the generation of Tots and Isa Molde, di ba? Parang from uh, the Tina Salak pa, di ba? Who just uh, joined the PBL. You're looking at all of these batches coming together in one professional league as the lady realtors here are struggling and are down by six. And you know, if you're a young player and you get to play against these veterans, you get exposed to this kind of volleyball. Imagine that is that. amazing. Imagine that. We never thought it would happen. But it is happening. And the other thing that's happening, it's the Creamline Cool sma Smashers pounding the Lady Realtors into submission here in set number three. Palomata. Palomata was there, but just too much force and power behind the Gemma Galanza strike. It is an eight-point lead for the defending champions. I know you have some numbers uh, with you, and uh, I don't know if you are allowed to share. <laughs> of course, I am allowed to share. <laughs> but just uh, some of the top scorers uh, in the second set, previous set. So we have uh, Pontillas right on point because we were talking about her total of six points, uh, uh, mostly coming from her offense, four points on that, and uh, Valdez. Uh, we mentioned how she's already scored 12 points so far in this match. In the second set, she scored five points, four from attacks, and uh, one block point. It's still, uh, yeah. Biggest lead of the match, 10 to 2. And this time, the Cool Smashers looking like they don't want to wait towards the end of the set anymore. They want to continue the run early here. Panaga also playing very well. Panaga must be happy because, you know, she, they. They couldn't beat Greenline right in the and finals, now. and now she's okay. She joined the other here. side as MJ Phillips gets the point. Three will be serving ten. A multi-sport girl. Did you know that? That she played. We're not talking about just playing a sport. She competed in different sports as Michelle Gumabao gets a crack in that ball, finds it and forces the ball through it. 11 to 3 is our score. Nice she's very athletic. I mean, MJ she's Phillips, very yeah. Athletic. She was competing all at the same time. Softball, basketball, and volleyball. Volleyball being her favorite. Wow. Yeah. Ado getting the point there. Four, serving 11. Maaga pa dito. This is early in the third set, you know. Gotta get something going if you're the Lady Realtors. Joey Prado, another veteran. Man, that power from Jessica. And this is what we are seeing. You know? Most of the attacks really coming from the side of the full smashers is so much force uh, You're right. put into it. And you That's see that, no? Point. But the yeah. things are blocked. You see the, the way the ball yeah. bounces back. That's an excellent point. Midiin talaga, no? Nanggigigil sila because it's, uh, it's about time. Good. How about that? Prado with a couple of attacks here. To spring some life into this Lady Realtor campaign through the block. And a faster strike, too. Exactly what they need at this point. Five 
Serving 12, oh, Morado saw it. She saw so much um, re uh, no, real estate, if I may use the real tour. <laughs> sumobra lang. Oh, sumobra lang. Nakita niya, laki ng espasyo dun. Alison Valdez not worried. They have a six-point lead and then a two sets to love lead. Little mini rally here for Santa Lucia. Seven will be serving 12. Three points to attacks and a block. Easy take on the receive. Nobody home at the back. Nasara ng pinto. Itong si Eliza Valdez. Was that Cheng responsible for the block, uh, Anne? Let's take a look at that. I think it's Cheng. It is. Just read it well. So a timeout here will be called by Coach Sherwin Meneses, the interim coach of the Creamline Cool Smashers. As uh, Coach Tai Bundit. I saw a video of him, you know, on a tripod on the phone while Training. Cool Smashers were doing the drills and Mitch uh, was saying that it is as intense as ever but but Eliza says a much awaited matchup is brought to you today by the Premier Volleyball League the Creamline Cool Smashers PVL defending champions versus the Santa Lucia Lady Realtors Creamline Cool Smashers team captain Eliza Valdez is excited and confident even without the presence of coach Sai today given that their team strengthened their connection in their two month bubble as seen in the previous Sense. Eliza is also accelerated upon entering the pro league, given that she can inspire many kids to take on that same volleyball path as hers. On the other side of the court, Mika Reyes is also as thrilled to play with and against legendary players. According to her, the strength of the Santa Lucia Lady Realtors lies within its roster filled with the veterans and additional guidance coming from Isa Maizo Pontillas. Both teams are focused on their individual movements and are ready to fight to get their team on the winning track. Let's continue the game to see who will get the upper hand. Saeed Insai reporting inside the PCV Social Civic and Cultural Center in Bacaray Locos Norte. Perfect. She was talking about that connection between her and uh, Eliza Valdez and Tai Bundit. And I just wanted to continue just to finish the thought. In the middle of this rally, by the way, Anna, Del Palamata is still serving. You and jinxed I, it, I think. <laughs> thanks, partner. <laughs> Thanks for looking out. <laughs> 13 to 10, Cool Smashers, but she's been serving for yep. a while. This rally was good to get them back into it because they were down by eight mm -hmm. at this, uh, in this uh, set, 10 to two, Karina. So just to finish that thought, she, Eliza did say that she misses the intensity, the personal intensity that Coach Tai provides in the training area that people do not see. Well, of course, everything is very different. The players, the coaches, you know, in this setup of, uh, you know, in the pandemic, there's a lot of adjustment that needs to be made. But I'm pretty sure, because he coached Tai Ganon, so right. much energy, right. the, um, uh, yeah, something that they uh, probably miss. But soon enough, yeah. they'll, they'll be uh, together right. again. 14 to 10. Another service error, that's the third for the Green Line Cool Smashers. And, and she reiterates the fact that. Uh, Yung hindi nyo nakikita. Mga hindi nyo nakikita sa TV, that kind of intensity. And I can only surmise what it meant, but <laughs> we can just imagine it's 10 times. <laughs> 10 times more. Sabi ko nga, 10 times better, no? Sabi niya, 10 times worse. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say 10 times more intense. Worse, worse pala. Phillips trying to go cross court. Back line. The realtors have a little spring to their step here in this rally that they're in. They're in the middle of it. They're down three. They open up to Valdez. You need a point. They go to Eliza Valdez. Just could not handle it. Mika Reyes delaying the ball, but nobody getting to that. 15-11 now. So the rally has been stymied by the Cool Smashers. Cheng, Phillips in the middle. Is that out? Oh, they get the point. 
multiple shoulder problems in the past years. We hope that she will be healthy as she cuts it right on the line. Beautiful, beautiful angle there to really capture that point. It's tough. Underhand, Valdez on the opposite side. Bobby Celso says no touch. So the Lady Realtor is now within whispering distance again. Of Sherwin Manessas and the Cool Smashers. Cheng. Kumabao. Again, a lot of force behind the swing, getting them to the second technical timeout. 16-13. Ayun na naman yung point na sinasabi ni Ann na pag sila humampas, malakas talaga. So it's 16-13 here in the third set. Creamline ahead two sets to love. Later on, by the way, we will remind you about the schedule for the next few days. And boy, buckle up because six days a week, as you mentioned, Ann. It's going to be a full, hectic uh, schedule. Yeah, like even tomorrow, the same schedule at 3 p.m. Petrogas versus the Black Mamba Army. And also, Valley Pure will debut versus Choco Mucho. That should be good. The youngsters of Valley Pure versus a uh, pretty much intact team also of uh, Choco Mucho, of Coach O. So 16-13 is our score, 2-0. Boom Gonzalez and Emilia Kanda. Right here at the One Sports Studios in the Lions of the New York. While the action is happening in, of course, uh, Ilocos Norte in Bacara. As a service error gives uh, the Lady Realtors a point. 14 serving 16. That's another one taken by Gemma Galanza. So when Gemma's in front, Eliza's at the back. Kyla Tienza was there just in case. One man to beat, or one woman to beat rather, as Risa Sato pushes it to the other side. Prado receiving. Delayed by the block. So here come the cool smashers. Galanza angles her body. Great reaction by Sato. Sa kabila pumunta, Michelle Gumabao. The dive from Prado. Too much underneath the ball from Isa Maizo Pantillas. Right, this is what we don't want to see. You know, a repeat oh, nga, of pala. the previous yeah, sets. Right. Ito yun eh, meron palaging turning point e as pattern, uh, no? e pattern eh. As you, it, it's about ending the set that uh, they've struggled with so far. Phillips delays her flight. Pumreno ng konti. And made the right call there. As it probably confused the defender too, the blocker. 18-14. I'll make that 18-15. Gia goes behind Pineda. Atienza will set it up. And access denied by Del Palomata. They're still in this. Talking about the Lady Realtors hanging tough. Bobby Celso on top of the action. Look at that. Palomata with a smile. It's nice to see them smiling. Kanina si You're Kai right. Balwalwa right. was, right. you know, signaling to your teammates. Okay, guys, got a smile. Phillips could not get her footing. As Kumabo again, that's again just full force. That's why it goes where it goes. Ooh, tough fall for MJ Phillips. Hope she's okay. 19 serving 16. Palamata pushes, not good enough. Morado trying to trick the defenders. Nope, not that time. This is just a two point deficit.
What are you see? Uh, are you surprised with what you've seen in the first day so far? I mean, in general, uh, with the two teams, did you expect a little sloppier than this? Maybe more errors, or are you surprised with the, uh, especially with the cool smashers with some good play and after that, that attack? I'm actually quite surprised with how cohesive they look. Knowing that we know that these these guys have trained, no, most of them have trained throughout the pandemic. But again, but like what you mentioned, iba yung naglalaro kayo. It's very different to have an opponent. But you see how cohesive they look. They 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 move with chemistry and, and all of that. For uh, the lady realtors, we expected a bit of uh, struggle because of that that uh, point. Naman the strength of uh, Creamline is chemistry. Sa kanila yun naman yung kulang. Um, Maybe Coach Edor Culio also looking for a combination. Mm -hmm. It looks like he found a gem here in Jovi Prado in this third set. Yes, and that's what I was about to mention. It's that trial and, yeah, and error that they're yeah. trying to do, and it's good that you know as, as the sets progress, you see that they're. Seeing it, nahanap nila. Ah, nahanap, speaking of. Finally, after a couple of attempts, Gia Morado able to find that donut hole in the defense of the Lady Realtors. There you go, that, that, that's the campfire look, as they say. Everybody going for it, but nobody getting it. <laughs> you see it. Yes, but you're just too late. <laughs> Don Carlos, Pao Soriano having fun. Ella de Jesus makes her first appearance. You know, these teams have very deep benches and daming pwedeng hugutin and we're only on uh, day one 21 18 and mika reyes puts it away i think i know the surprise that i don't know if that's the surprise that eliza valdez was talking about about ella de jesus because i remember a month ago i interviewed ella and she said she might play libero mm. but she's not dressed as libero obviously yeah so I don't know if that was the but, surprise. But, but it probably means that, uh, you know, they, uh, they've, they've trained for it or she could be a defense specialist. Well, she's good at it regardless. She she's actually listed in our lineup as a libero. But of course, right, the, the, we've seen Kyla Tienza throughout uh, the match. I am surprised. <laughs> You're speechless, Ad. I am. So I'm trying to process. MJ yeah, yeah. yeah. Phillips getting them closer here. Two points, 22 20. It's, it, it pays to have versatile players. Oh, you definitely, can, uh, definitely. Chanel Cheng. Chanel Cheng. In the meantime, another transferee. Finding a new home with Santa Lucia, serving it to Atienza. Valdez on the opposite side. Maizo gets a hand on it. Phillips rises and fools the defenders at the net. What a move by MJ Phillips. This is definitely a much better set. Very good progression for the Lady Realtors. Oh, look at that. Last second, just over the fingernails of Risa Sato. I guess this time around, it's just really about playing smart, finding those holes on the other side. Now, in the last set, two sets, sets two and one, you saw the Creamline Cool Smashers at the right time, making a switch or putting it in a different gear. So let's see if the Lady Realtors have learned a little bit of the lessons from that first two sets, from those first two sets. teams, four teams rather, in the opening day of the first professional volleyball league in the Philippines. And they're putting on a show here. The Cool Smashers and the Lady, lady Realtors down by one. Good serve, good receive, good toss. Chance here for the Lady Realtors. They go to Isa Maiso and she scores. Game is not yet over, according to the veteran. 22 all. Chen Chen. And by the way, for those who are still not, you know, with the program, if you notice, teams are not switching courts. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, protocols right? that you need to adjust. Wow, for the first time in the last three sets, 
The Lady Realtors take the lead towards the end of the set. Can they sustain this? Ano ba yun? Miss time ba yun, Anne? It, it seemed like niyo, it, no? yes. Phillips' length playing a factor at the net there. Reverse. Valdez. Pontillas was there. Phillips will try again. This time, the cool smashers with a counter. Pineda with a pickup. Chang in the middle. Reyes unable to put it away. Gumabao. Phillips. Chang. Help! Help! Did you hear that? Somebody screaming, help! And for the first time in this match, the Lady Realtors with a set point. It is a different approach for the Lady Realtors. It's not about those strong hits. How they've scored the points is really just finding those spots. holes and spots. Oh, tips lang, oh, tips lang eh. Puro tips lang behind the blocker where, you know, there's no coverage. Somebody touched the net. Bobby Celso sees it. The all-seeing Bobby Celso. <laughs> and this isn't the... Magta timeout si Coach Oculio dito. Lady Realtors lost a set point. They still have one more. Coach Ed Orculio on your screens. Let's go, guys. Remember, no fans. But I love how the game is still as intense as it, as it can be, even without the fans trying to manufacture their own energy in Ilocos Norte at the PCV Social Civic and Cultural Center in Bacara. 24. Dreamline looking to tie and extend this third set. Cheng, Phillips behind. Nobody home! Lahat <laughs> nakakumpul. You tap it at the green line. Is that a double block? Is this playing at this point? Yes, it is. It was Sato, but though. Sato. We'll be credited that for that one. And you see the wave, you know? She really tried to reach for that ball. Maiso, though, with the response. 25 24. Third set action here on One Sports. Crucial, crucial point here for the Lady Realtors. Again, like what we mentioned, all of the games matter. It's a single uh, round robin. Oh, oh, missed opportunity there. <laughs> but this girl, Jovi Prado, has been a spark in this third set, and regardless of how this ends. So we're going to an extension for set number three. Panaga has been solid, and she's back in. Eliza, you know that she's always the go-to in moments like the, these. Kumabao, blocked. Back to Mitch, checked again. Reverse, Galanza over the blockers. Cheng will lift it up to Phillips. Long rally here, Morado, reverse set to Gumaba, and again the door shut down by the Realtors. Palomata and Phillips this using their height. What a rally, that is a third set point. There you go, that reaction from MJ Phillips. And she's on deck with another set point, their third. Miss received, but Green line recovering. A chance here for Santa Lucia, but they turn it over. Oh, and we're going to a fourth. What a fight back by the Santa Lucia Lady Realtors. We will be back on One Sports.
Ojo. Hello and good evening, Philippines. Once again, my name is Boom Gonzalez with Andrew Mulya Kanda. I eat inside, of course, inside the BCV Social Civic and Cultural Center in Bacaray, Locos Norte. Me and Anne are right here at the One Sports Studio in Reliance in Mandaluyong. Set number four. This was a great fight back, knowing that the Lady Realtors were down their largest deficit in the whole match at eight, if I'm not mistaken, Anne. Yes, it was a good comeback. This is where, uh, you know, we were mentioning earlier, they were trying the right combination of players on the floor, trying to see who could be the spark plug, no? who can change and turn the momentum on their side, and they found it. Although it was a bit close, I think the, the good thing to note there is that they really did hang on to that third set. Down eight, and then they had eventually three set points and eventually taking it at 27-25. The first set was 25-18 for Cream Line, 25-20 also for Cream Line, who are ahead two, serving one. And two back-to-back, -back, or back-to-back -back service errors from Phillips and Valdez. What, what did it for the Lady Realtors? We, what's the simple explanation? How did they... Uh, come back and stay and then win that, that third set. I think there was a bit more organization and a, they got a bit more comfortable with each other. And I think on top of that, the combination of players, you know, mm. putting in, you know, trying out different players who could mm. score the points. And they found one that worked. Right. And they, you know, stuck with it. Yung hugot kay Joby hugot Prado, it. maganda yun, ano, para eh, Coach Orculio. At saka maaga niya linagay during that deficit, actually. And it worked for him. And it's good to have a bit of support because it's been Phillips, Maizo. You need some other uh, players you're to right, bring in the you're points. Right, you're right. She was blocked there though by Bangs. For serving two. I love that serve of Arisa Sato. You think it's a miss serve, but it's actually something that she does. She either serves it sharp and long or that dead or, and short, you know, the dead ball that doesn't have any kind of spin. It's a very good floater. Yeah. And floater uh, serves are quite difficult to receive because it's hard to read. Right. And then she has another one that like skims almost the net. Na antulis. But the point goes to the Lady Realtors though in that rally. Three serving four. Phillips keeps it alive. Cheng opens up behind to Pontillas. Atienza. Kumabao off the block. <laughs> Getting a good workout here. Speaking of uh, workout, during the whole week when, when you enter this bubble, the teams only have one hour of court time every day. Hati hati. Mm. All of the 10 teams. I don't know if they're thankful for that, especially <laughs> those who have had too much training. <laughs> but imagine that. So the trick now here for them, even during the court time practices, is in the hotel room, they're already warming up. Even in transit, which they say is a 30-minute ride, bus ride, from the hotel to uh, the, the court, where they're playing right now is, an, is a 30 minute ride. So even in the bus, they stretch, they're doing they do, their yeah. activations and their warm up. And, and so they really maximize that one hour right. on the court. Yeah, and para pagdating daw sa court, training na kagad, court time na kagad. And Michelle Gumabao is like gearing up right now, giving them a two point lead, six to four. Because you don't want to do your warm ups when you just get to the court, dahil nga, isang oras na lang. You waste oh, a lot of time correct, for the... Correct, correct. 6-4 is the score. Cheng 
In the middle, Palomata. Sinungkit yung bola. Pero lumabas. 7-4. Realtors extending this to a fourth set. Ganda na reaction niya eh. With that sungkit, yung tawag nilang sungkit, ano? Pero couldn't keep it in play. Galanza with the hop. Cheng opens up. Phillips. Ooh. Oh, that worked. It was uh, not the best set for uh, Phillips, but still a point. Kinoa ng paraan. Sometimes MJ Phillips, even before when I would see her play, it, it she, she strikes you like she's casual about things, no? But yeah. yung, and I'm not saying that she's not intense. It's just that yung disposition niya, buong casual. In the meantime, our very own Ayu Kinsai had a chat with Dots Carlos. Let's listen to that one. Former UP Lady Maroon MVP and All-Star Thoughts Carlos is now playing for the Creamline Cool Smashers. I asked her earlier on what is her contribution to the team given that she had the opportunity to go head-to-head -head with them last season and how is her experience playing with Michelle Gumabao and Eliza Valdez? All of our coaches, especially uh, since wala si Coach Tai, our assistant coaches, medyo sila talaga yung nag-guide sa akin eh. So, the role, I think, is um, to fill in what's uh, needed. Kasi yun nga, even me actually, um, opposite, outside, any position naman, I'm ready. So, yun naman yung lagi nilang uh, nire-remind sa akin. And like also, kung ano nire-remind sa amin nila Ate Lai, na everyone in the team, uh, Needed talaga kami uh, and meron talaga kaming special role isa, isa, sa bawat isa sa team. Every day going to training, thinking na actually hindi siya compete eh. Like train beside Ate Michelle is exciting and um, I feel motivated every day. Kasi um, yun nga, healthy competition but at the same time marami ako natututunan from her. Touch Carlos there. We haven't seen her in action here today. But the word is from her teammates in practices. I've heard from her teammates that she has, the, the words that were used were she has gone to another level now. Oh, in I terms cannot of her wait play, to see that. In terms of her play, yes. You know, you were speaking of um, Phillips being a bit casual or parang medyo relaxer. You know, another player on the side of the Lady Realtors is like that is Cheng. If right. you would recall, ever since. ever since she's been like that, parang um, very relaxed. Miss Lee and Gata, back to ganyan, diba? 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 Parang chill na chill sila sa lahat ng ginagawa. Kala but mo, then they're there. Yeah. Kala mo, warm up lang. Oh. But it it defies, you know, what you believe about intensity mm. and what you, the concept of intensity. Pero grabe, grabe maglaro. At grabe yung laro natin right now. It is 9 to 6. Valdez. Checked and touches the line, captures the line. Seven, serving nine. The Santa Lucia Lady Realtors are proving to be a pesky opponent today for the defending champions. Up top to Michelle. Nice pick up there. The save is in play. Pineda again. Cheng. Prado. Reverse to Michelle. And Michelle, with all that power again, getting the 10th point for the Cream Line Cool Smashers. This is, this is the great part of volleyball, itong mga rally na to na, ano, off broken plays, ano? And them really, you, you see the skill level now of of the, the liberos, the, the setters, adjusting how you to read, non perfect. How you adjust. yeah, so. And this is what they say you know? a good player, you cannot choose. Correct. You really cannot choose. Not everything's going to be perfect. Pineda again, keeping it alive. Cheng waiting it for, for it to bounce off the net. Smartly, of course, combination play. And Pineda has been all over the place for the Lady Realtors. Atienza was there. Reverse to Michelle. Pineda again! Almost got it. 
bang Pineda. Oh, she's done she's done a lot of that kind of hitting back in <laughs> when she was an open attacker. Scored a lot of points with that. Had a lot of uh, battles against Eliza Valdez. Those oh, Adam Sonateneo yeah. <laughs> matches. 18 points for Baldo. Prado. Very forceful on that approach. It's good stuff from Jovi Prado. One of uh, four Petrogas Angels who have transferred to the Santa Lucia Lady Realtors. It's good reaction there. Nice pickup by Eliza Galanza. And Gemma Galanza with a little bit of heat on that one. And MJ Phillips could not handle it. Galanza has been favoring that down the line angle. You look at the production, we're seeing the numbers every time they serve, and you look at the production, very spread out para dito sa clean line, Anne. Kumabo has not slowed down here for cream line. The defending champs ahead and back at six. So Coach Urcullio will call a timeout. And here is that part of the match again where Creamline is looking to separate in the fourth set or sorry in the third set the Santa Lucia Lady Realtors did not allow well actually they did pero lumaban pabalik yung kapit no. was, was something that we saw let's see this is a different set altogether Pam is right there also Amy Ahumiro there helping out Ate Aiza. I think no, that's part of the danger when you play against MJ and Aiza. They lull you to sleep. <laughs> they lull you Why? into this false sense of security. Na, it's so yeah, chill. Lang to, oh. And then papaluan ka. They're very quiet. Ka. <laughs> papaluan ka. Playing possum. That is, well, Aiza's been doing it all her career. So they get a point after that timeout, and that's always good. The aforementioned Pontillas with 11 points on nine attacks and a couple of service aces. That's out. A touch. But, ah, okay. Michelle says, nope. It's my point. Can't take it away. And she was so sure. Yeah. This is Michelle. Palu watches on. And congratulations again to everybody behind the Premier Volleyball League for not only being pro now as a professional league, but organizing all of this and getting us going. And now it's 15 to 9. Gemma Galanza able to stop the run and gun attack by Troncoso. Cheng, Prado, Gia, Panaga, Lumusot, Cheng, back line, that is underneath the ball, 16 to 9 is our score. Mika Reyes had her own conversation with our very own Ayi Tensai. Let's listen in. former DLSU lady spiker formidable blocker in the national team and now ready to get the ball rolling for the Santa Lucia lady realtors I asked me careers a while back what it would mean for her to give Santa Lucia lady realtors their first ever pro league championship here in the PVL to get the first championship um, as of now hindi ko pa yan talaga iniisip but syempre part pa rin yun ng goal ng kahit sino team especially in team din namin na makuha yung championship but for now we'll take it one game at a time first biggest adjustment so far i think um uh, uh, masasabi ko lang yung pagdating lang dito sa lawag kasi we only have one hour na training sa na binibigay so i think yun yung isang adjustment na kailangan namin i-maximize talaga kasi very very limited time talaga yun para sa training 
but uh, minamaximize lang din namin yun para gawin yung mga adjustments na pwede namin gawin para sa next game namin. Nika Reyes talking about the adjustments, 16 to 9, and some of the players have the same thing. It's, a, it's the same song that they're saying about this season. The team that can adjust fastest might have the most success at the end of this very quick tournament. You know, it, it's very tricky, the, this new normal of how we play. Super, you know? yeah. it's, it's not just about you knowing how to play volleyball. It's how all of these athletes, the coaching staff, learned you know, to adjust their training. Yeah. It's, it's how they learn um, you know, adjusting in going back, right. as in games like these. Right, right. Nobody has any kind of experience or frame of reference anything like this as Jovi Prado finally stops the bleeding. The lead was at nine already and the biggest of the match. But Jovi Prado, you know, if this, the Lady Realtors lose this and we still have a lot to play, right? But if they do, Ed Urculio might have found a better combination to start with here. Not to say anything about Jonas Abete because she was wonderful in that first set. But sometimes it's, correct me if I'm wrong, and sometimes it's a combination that works. Uh, better with some players, right? And against an opponent, a specific a sp opponent. Yeah, that's another point, yes. As MJ Phillips gets that one. Because Jonas Abete was great in that first set. Hindi lang talaga nila maitapos yung trabaho kanina. But Prado has been consistent, you know, as, as she was uh, put in. Uh, we've seen how consistent uh, she's been. So has Gemma Galanza. Very consistent yes. <laughs> in delivering the points. Now they are six points away. Down seven, sorry, down eight. Let's see if they can come back still like they did. They were down eight the most in set number three. But now it's back to the biggest lead of the match at nine. So now maybe a substitution will be made here by Coach Urculio. Maybe the Jovi Prado experiment has uh, already over. But you know, the, these are things that sometimes happen in a game. Mm -hmm. and, and she's, uh, you know, delivered while she was in the front Tanya, line. Yeah. It's a different story probably uh, in the back row. So they're going to try again with Kai Balwalwa. Actually, Prado is still there. Ruby De Leon is now in. Check that. MJ. MJ Phillips, this is a completely different combination. We haven't seen this before. And Prado, Phillips, De Leon, Balwalwa, and is it Pineda? When we get the top shot, we'll see it again. But you know, just all the same goal because Don't they also, need yes. to be able to stop the, yeah. the cool smashers from you know getting in more points. Reyes and Troncoso complete the six. Still alive. Chance ball. Green line will go to the number one option, and why not? Time and time again. Defense, something that uh, they need to tighten in the back row. She was there, just lacked a bit, a few more inches, you know, to get to the ball. Dodge Carlos appearance finally here. The new cool smasher is in as they are in the lead by now eight after that service error. So now Coach Sherwin Menezes is trying to get Tots' feet wet, so to speak, you know, as Isa Pontinius also comes back. Back Pineda, back in. Janelle Cheng back in to serve. I think they, the, the Lady Realtors will need to go back to what had worked for them in, in the previous sets. They were very smart with their offense, really not about power, but finding those you know, good targets on the other side. But Eliza Valdez with some power on that one, so it bounces out for a 22 to 13 lead. The defending champions are smelling it, so to speak, as the Santa Lucia <laughs> Lady Realtors are staring down the barrel. Did I see Kyle Negrito also? They, I think they put in Kyle Negrito with Dots Carlos there. So now that it's towards the end of the set, maybe Coach Sherwin Meneses giving them some court time 
some actual competition here. These are very important players and stars in their own schools. Kyle, of course, from FEU, Setter, and uh, Tots Carlos from the UP Lady Maroons. But this one is slipping now for the Lady Realtors. Having said that, and what are the positives that they can take? I know they haven't lost yet, but they're three, they're nine points down and three, nine, three points away. What are the positives that they can take here? Well, for one, they did win set number three, which means that they can do it. It's just a matter of being consistent throughout the set because we can't, right now, the, the chemistry problem will still be there because it takes time, right? They, they need to work on that. But I think, yeah, they've done it in the third set. They need to play smart, first with their defense and with their offense. It worked. Eh. You find a way to score the point. Doesn't need to be a strong spike. Well, Phillips providing a wall there. An offensive block is uh, the term for this one. Right down after Eliza Valdez with the attack. And it's not like they didn't battle in sets one and two. Remember, they were right in it. It's just that the, the good teams, the better teams, just know when to really step on the gas at the right time. Carlos overshoots that one. So a couple of points straight, sorry. And, and I think one of the things also that we see in terms of differences would be there's more balanced scoring on the side of a cool smasher. So each and every player that you would see has some uh, points, you know, that, that uh, they contributed. This but is, on yeah. the other side, right. yeah, but, yeah. but you, we, we keep mentioning some of the names, um, very specific names, uh, I guess, more support is needed. In the meantime, Coach Sherwin Menes is blinking here. Three straight points by the Lady Realtor. So he pulls out Tots Carlos and Kyle De Quito and brings back Michelle Gumabao and Gio Morado to try to make sure that this job is done. That's why they put them in. The closers, so to speak. And Gumabao delivers. Eliza Valdez back on deck, service deck, two points away from getting win number one now. No, another service error. That's a couple for her. But number two, three time PBL Conference MVP is human, as we know, every now and then. It's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> Makes us all feel a little better about ourselves. Is that what it is? Combination play. Cheng had a left hand on it. Prado unable to finish the play. Phillips was there. Cheng will set it up for Isa. Phillips again. Cheng again. Isa again. Delayed by the block. Morado will give it back to Michelle Gumabao, who has been on fire. So much force into her attacks today. You feel the eagerness to play. One of the most competitive players. Well, she's not like, you know, the casual one. She will show her <laughs> she's heart. She's very competitive. Yes, she's super competitive and her heart is on the sle her, her sleeve. You know she's fighting. You know she's intense as Panaga. That's the perfect word. Intense. Intense talaga, you know, ever since. And not that one is better than the other. It's just iba ibang style yan, di ba? Yeah, different, different players would have different uh, approaches, approaches yeah. to how they play. At saka different personalities. They yes. really have all different personalities as the green line. Cool smashers. Take set number four. And that means, I just realized, Anne, they swept last year, the last time they played. That was a 20-game sweep, so nagpapatuloy yung kanilang panalo sa Open Conference. Here in your Premier Volleyball League, we'll take a break and we'll be back to wrap this baby up.
actually having a hard Good evening, PBL fans. Here with me tonight is Michelle Gumaba of the Korean Line Cool Smashers, player of the game. Congratulations, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. How did you get to maximize your attacks given the limited amount of time in the training, the strict protocols in this bubble system? How much did you have to sacrifice and adjust in order to put out this stunning performance? The sacrifices are there. We had to take time away from everything, like family and work, just to really be here and be a professional athlete. This is what we've all been waiting for for the past years so now it's here and we just want to make it worthwhile we were training twice a day for the past two months so this is the time na ibigay talaga namin lahat and to make all the sacrifices worth it yes thank you michelle congratulations to you and the entire team there you thank have you. it michelle gumabao of the korean line cool smashers this is the premier volleyball league see you in tomorrow's game Thank you very much, Ai Tinsai, and congratulations to Michelle Gumabo. All smiles for their first win in their defense of the Open Conference of the Premier Volleyball League. 20 wins in November 9, 2019, if I'm not mistaken, to sweep the conference. And then their first win today, so they continue to roll on. And so will we. The game's tomorrow, Anne. 3 p.m. tomorrow, Petrogas Angels versus the Black Mamba Army Lady Troopers. That's the first game for tomorrow, Sunday. Remember, we're mm -hmm. playing six days a week. And then we have another one at 6 p.m. 6 p.m., another uh, game to look forward to. Bali Pure versus Chocomucho. Ooh, that's going to be very interesting. The youngsters of Bali Pure and a uh, pretty much intact uh, Chocomucho flying titans. Well, that's going to be a tall team. That's going to be an explosive team. And it's going to be an explosive day again in Bacra Ilocos Norte. For Ayit Insai there inside the venue and for Andrew Mulyakanda here at One Sports Studio. My name is Boom Gonzalez. We'll see you tomorrow as we continue the action on the very first professional volleyball league in the Philippines. This is the Premier Volleyball League. Good night.